Hello everyone, this is the next five minutes or less video. This is going to be covering air pressure. Here we go. First of all, to get air pressure, you have to understand that air has mass. So if you were to weigh a balloon that's not filled with air and get a number, and then you would blow up the balloon, you would see that the number definitely increases. You could try this at home. So that means air must have mass, right? So we could say that the more air you have, the more mass that you have. So knowing this, air is made up of molecules. The molecules in the air are being pulled down to the surface of the earth by gravity, which ends up giving them weight. So there actually ends up being these molecules that, that are pressing on you right now, on your head, on your shoulders, on your arms, on your feet. And, and that's what we call air pressure. So that's the weight of the air molecules that are pressing down around us and all the objects in the surface of the earth and pretty much everything that air touches exerts a pressure on the object. So if you look at this picture here, there's a person, Marnie, on the surface over here, and there is a person, uh, Briette Deanna, over here on the top of the mountain. So which one has more air on top of them? So you could see Marnie has this one, all these blocks, right? And Deanna only has three areas of air. So we could say that Deanna has less air on top of her and Marnie has more. So Deanna is experiencing less air pressure at the higher altitude and Marnie's experiencing more air pressure down by sea level. So based on that, we could say higher altitudes have lower air pressure because there's less air above you. Now, going on to the next thing, as you can see, I put a little model here. Cold air has more molecules in it than, than warm air. So you could probably guess which one has more pressure. It's going to be the cold air because there's more molecules in cold air than there are in warm air. So that means hot air over here must have less air pressure because the molecules are further apart. So now we could say as temperature goes up, as the, the air gets warmer, you're going to have less air pressure. Now, to measure air pressure, we use what we call a barometer, and this is going to be measuring air pressure in a unit of millibars. Generally, the higher the pressure goes on the barometer, the cooler the temperatures, the lower the humidity outside, and the better the weather. So we call the weather uh, fair. That would mean not cloudy, so clear skies, no rain. If it's low pressure on the barometer, that means it's probably warmer temperatures with a lot of humidity. Humidity means a lot of water in the air, and that's gonna bring a lot of clouds and storms. Here's a hint that I use. High pressure gives you heavy sinking air, which is happy weather, which I just say is not raining essentially, and high pressure systems rotate in the way that hands on a clock do. They go outwards and clockwise, so they spin like this. And a way you can remember that is use the word hock. So it stands for high pressure goes outwards and clockwise. The L is going to be the opposite. Low pressure is light air which rises. It brings lousy weather like clouds and it goes inwards and counterclockwise in the way that it curves. So you can remember that by remembering lick, low, inwards, counterclockwise. On this map, with a bunch of isobars on it, we can actually tell where it's most windy. The isobars that you see measure air pressure. So where, wherever they're close together, like here, 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 those are going to be the windiest areas. Last but not least, a molecule of water weighs less than a molecule of air. So essentially, an area that has a lot of humidity is going to have lower pressure. So the more water you put in the air, the lower the pressure gets. Now, say you had a map like this where you had to draw some isobars in, so I could draw those. So here's 1,008, here's the 1,004s, here's the 1,000s, so we'll just connect them like that. Now, what type of pressure is this? So you start on the outside, it's 1,000, 1,004, 1,008. So as you go to the middle, the pressure increases, so that means this is a high pressure center. So you put a big H in the middle. And over here, we could go 1,012. 1016s look like this. 1020 goes like this. So you start on the outside. 1020, 1016, 1012. We're going lower as you go to the middle, so this is a low pressure. So there's probably all clouds over here. And this area is probably fair or not cloudy. So that is air pressure in five minutes or less. Hope you found it useful, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.